Hey there, students. This is probably the closest I'm going to come to ever making a video about gambling. Uh, but what this is going to be about is Pascal's wager. Let's call it all in on God, which I'm very excited about Clemson getting to the college football playoff. So let's go ahead and go with the all in theme here. And so Pascal's wager is an important philosophical construct that comes from Blaise Pascal, a 17th century mathematician, philosopher, and theologian. Now, as far as that goes, that may strike us as odd today in the 21st century, a mathematician and theologian, but not so odd in the context of the 17th century. So let's go ahead and set up this context, the context of the scientific revolution. Uh, men like Bacon and Descartes, people who were people of faith, but at the same time, they were also people of science. But what we have to understand here, that although people like Pascal, uh, Bacon, and Descartes uh, were religious men, at the same time, it's not the same way it was before the science scientific revolution. So during the 17th century, Descartes, Bacon, and others are changing the way that people constructed knowledge. Instead of just being able to believe in God because the church says so, or the Bible says so, or something like that, there has to be something more to it, okay? So when we think about the scientific revolution, we're thinking about the beginnings of the scientific method. And the scientific method employs a measure of skepticism, that you can't take something as a given right off the bat. And the only ways that we can really arrive at truth is there's got to be some element of rationality. It has to make sense on some level and or empiricism that we have sensed it, we've touched it, seen it, smelled it, uh, heard it, or tasted it, that we have experienced it as reality or else at least it's something that makes sense in our minds. And so with that, nothing can be taken as a given. If we ask Descartes, cogito ergo sum, I've done another video video on that, uh, that is something that Descartes is not even taking his own existence as a given. And so with that, we've got to think about not even the existence of God is a given. And so it comes down to a matter of belief, a matter of faith. And so with that, when we think about this, that Pascal as a religious man, he's got to present some sort of rational basis for this belief. How can a man of science also be a man of faith? And how are we going to reconcile these two things? And so Pascal's wager is how Blaise Pascal made this synthesis between his faith and his status as a scientist, as a noted mathematician. And he wrote this in his Pensee. I tell you what, did I just level up on French or what? Woo! <laughs> Sorry, needed to celebrate a little bit, and I want to thank my friend Vicky for helping me out with this, for giving me encouragement, not only with this inquiry, but with my French. Your support means the world to me, Vicky. And also, quick shout out to Dr. Sadler, who has this book on his list of books that he would bring to a desert island. So be sure to check out Dr. Greg Sadler's channel. Great stuff there. And so... Pensée, all right, as the French say it, it means thoughts, which of course we have the word pensive in the English language. This was posthumously published in the 1660s, so this really isn't even something that he had quite ready for publication, even though he may have intended to publish it. But this is where we see the wager. Now, of course, we start with mathematics. Now, sometimes math scares me, but I think that I've got enough to be able to do this. Now, there's the concept of infinity, all Right, that there is just this infinite number. I can't even really describe what it is because we've never seen it. It's something that is beyond anything. Like anything we've ever counted, infinity is bigger than that. How much bigger? Infinitely bigger. And it's like, whoa, okay. But anyway, let's go to something more comfortable. Let's go to the finite. One, two, three. Okay, that I've got, okay? Uh, maths may not come easy for me, but that does. Okay, simple arithmetic, we've got it. So you've got the infinite and the finite. And so as far as what Pascal is saying here, he says that we've never seen the infinite, 
but we still believe that it exists. So that is one of his arguments for believing in God, that mathematicians believe in infinity. Even though we have never observed something that is infinite, it's something that we have rationally put together, that something that we've never seen in existence can actually exist. Now, the other thing is that compared to the infinite, the finite is nothing, okay? So when we think about one, two, three, in comparison with even a thousand, okay? But in comparison with something that is beyond counting, that even a million pales in comparison to this construct of infinity. So I'm going to do a little demonstration here, and let's uh, thank our friend Descartes for the Cartesian plane. And I'm actually going to do this on my handy little tablet because I think it would be fun this way. So let's do a little demonstration of Pascal's wager using a Cartesian plane. All right, so I'm not the biggest math expert, but we're going to give this a good old college try. So let's go ahead and draw our Cartesian plane here. And we're going to call this x-axis the axis of existence. And then this is going to be the y-axis is going to be the axis of my belief. All right. So then if we think about the quadrant here that we see that God exists and I belief. Now, with this, I'm going to heaven, Lieutenant Dan. All right, let's make him smile. Let's, or her, okay, so whoever it is, but let's see, we've got a halo, which we couldn't quite draw because I've got other stuff there, but still, y'all get my point here. If we go ahead and maybe put some little wings on him or something like that, okay, let's maybe a harp, okay, even though that's just, my drawing is not that great, but you get the point. Now, Pascal would say that what we have here is an infinite gain, okay? Because the Christian religion promises eternal life to anyone who believes. And Luke, I hope that you and your church history friends are enjoying this video as well, because you might find this useful. And so what we have here is an infinite gain. Now let's go over to this quadrant where God does not exist, yet I believe. Now what we have here is... A dirt nap. Now what we can see here is a finite loss, okay? Now the finite loss that he's talking about here is because you lived your life as a Christian. So maybe you gave up some things that you didn't want to do. You gave up some earthly pleasures thinking that you were going to get this infinite gain. So you lost some elements of your own physical earthly life. But then at the same time as Pascal notes that at least you were a decent person. There's really nothing about the dictates of the Christian religion that makes someone indecent. And so even though you could chalk it up to a loss, what did someone really lose besides a few earthly pleasures? And then when we go here where God does not exist and I don't believe, then again you're looking at a dirt nap and we have here a what we could call a finite gain because this person lived their life on their own terms however they wanted. And so they got their own life, but they didn't really gain anything infinite by not believing. Okay, so now here is where we get to the grand finale, almost like we need a drum roll or something like that, because this is where God exists and I don't believe. And this is uh-oh, like, because really, when you read the Bible, it's like the Christian religion is very clear about what happens to people who don't believe. And let's burn him up. Burn, baby, burn. And we'll go ahead and put a little devil there with a pitchfork. And he's so happy and he's got his horns because he has company in hell. Rah! <laughs> Okay, now what we have here is what we would call an infinite loss. So what we see here from Pascal is that belief presents us with a finite loss on one hand and an infinite gain on the other, whereas non-belief presents us with a finite gain on one hand and an infinite loss on the other hand. So if we're thinking about wagering, okay, so if you want to bet 
on God, thinking about the infinite versus the finite is the key to this wager. And this is where his mathematics comes into this whole calculation. Because mathematically, if there is any chance that the infinite rewards promised by the Christian religion are true, it is worth the finite wager of one's life and faith. And what we see here is the integration of science and faith that was actually very common during the scientific revolution. Uh, it's often noted that Newton spent more time studying uh, sacred texts than he did studying physics and the like. And so although the most famous example we see is often the example of Galileo versus the church, the conflict between science and faith is not necessarily inevitable. Now, of course, this has spurred a great bit of discussion. I see that a lot of the videos on YouTube about Pascal's wager are actually made by atheists who are quite angered by it. So tell me what you think about Pascal's wager. Do you find it reasonable? Do you sympathize with him? Uh, do you think that it's just a whole bunch of baloney? Who knows? But tell me. Give me some comments, and remember, I've got plenty other videos about European history, philosophy, U.S. history, and, you know, just basically whatever I feel like educating people about at whatever day and time. So, feel free to subscribe and watch some more of my stuff, and I'll be back with some more videos quite soon. Again, thank you, Vicky, for the French lesson. Pensez. It's always a pleasure.